Good afternoon. I'm a member of the Citizen Potawatomi Nation, and as you said, I'm head of the Indian Law Resource Center. The Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples was initiated in 1976, primarily by American Indian leaders, but with the participation and support of Indian leaders from Central and South America. American Indian leaders turned to the international community principally because of the long-standing failure of the United States courts and federal law to recognize that Indian nations and other native peoples in this country are entitled to constitutional rights and to equality before the law. That was denied to us then and it's denied to us now. Indian and other native nations in this country live with a system of federal law today that is unconstitutional, it's discriminatory, and it's unworkable. It makes it almost impossible for native nations to overcome the social and economic conditions that they endure. It's like the separate but equal doctrine. It's like the Jim Crow laws that oppressed African Americans and others for many years in this country. The federal courts, for example, say that the United States government can take Indian property, Indian land, without due process of law and without any compensation. And this government does do that today. Congress claims that it has plenary power to do as it wishes when it legislates about Indian and other native nations without regard for the Bill of Rights and without regard for the limitations of the Constitution. Congress believes that it can terminate Indian nations. It said that this body can do away with Indian governments at will without limitation, can violate treaties normally without any legal liability, and so on, the so-called plenary power doctrine. The federal courts routinely approve of federal legislation that would be declared unconstitutional if it affected any other group in this country. Well, the Declaration calls upon the United States to put an end to that kind of discriminatory legal doctrine and that kind of unconstitutional treatment. The Declaration is an international human rights instrument that's non-binding, but it does recognize rights and it recognizes the rules that countries are expected to follow when they deal with indigenous peoples. It's supported by a global consensus. No country in the world opposes the Declaration today. The Declaration includes many rights, uh, including the right of self-determination, uh, the right to be free from discrimination, uh, rights of women, native women is very important, uh, rights to land and resources, real rights of ownership, not diminished rights such as federal law usually accords. Well, what does all this mean? Others, I'm sure, will elaborate more on what those rights are in the Declaration, but what should it mean for Congress? What should Congress do? Congress should, I believe, embrace the Declaration, and I'm very pleased with the words that you've spoken here today. Congress should embrace the Declaration because it is American. It's based on American values. It's American in its origin. It's, a, it's an agenda for change that can easily be embraced, and it would be very positive. But the practice of enacting legislation that takes the property of Indian nations or other Native nations must come to an end. This country doesn't need to go on taking things from Indian nations. Congress must give up the notion that when it legislates in the field of Indian affairs or with regard to other indigenous peoples subject to its jurisdiction, that it can ignore the Bill of Rights or the other limitations in the Constitution. Native peoples, too, are entitled to constitutional rights and to equality before the law. Native leaders are reviewing now what kinds of proposals they want to make, and Congress should listen carefully to those proposals when they make them. Now, a starting point for some of the changes that could be made in federal Indian law uh, is the set of 
principles, general principles of law in this study that the Indian Law Resource Center uh, has done, and I will be submitting the entire study for the committee's use. The Congress, this committee, should conduct further hearings in the future to monitor what the administration does to carry out the aspirations it has so well proclaimed and so well embraced. Let us see what progress is being made and whether we're getting at the root issues. Congress should, I believe, also conduct oversight hearings and consider what Congress could do to correct the many damaging and, I believe, unconstitutional decisions that have been made by the federal courts. It was, after all, the Supreme Court of the United States in 1955 that said that this government can take the property of Indian nations without any compensation and without due process. Uh, that was invented by the Supreme Court. And there are other doctrines like that that Congress didn't invent. The courts did. And they need to be reviewed. They need to be changed in order to come into compliance with the Declaration. And I believe Congress can find ways to help in that important process. Thank you very much for having this oversight hearing, and I look forward to questions. Well, thank you so much for your, your, your statement. Uh, personally, I really appreciate it.